Let's take a short break and when we return, it will be time to speak with our guest of the day, Libra Soshoma, a lawyer and public affairs analyst on the Supreme Court's order on owed Naira notes. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Politics Tonight. You're still watching Politics Tonight, digging beyond the headlines. I am now joined by a lawyer and public affairs analyst, Libros Oshoma, on the Supreme Court's order on owed Naira notes. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Let, let's start with this. Uh, we got this news today that the High Court in Ikeja, Lagos, was rejecting old Naira notes from litigant filing processes. Given that the Supreme Court gave an order barring uh, the enforcement of the old Naira notes deadline, was the action of the High Court healthy for the policy? Um, I would um, not, first and foremost, I will not blame the High Court for refusing to collect um, old Naira notes uh, because. While um, you would expect, because some people have said, oh, the High Court has refused to obey the order of the Supreme Court. For me, that's not the High Court refusing to obey the order of the Supreme Court. It is um, rather the CBN that refused to give a clear court directive on what people should do. And you know that in Nigeria, government institutions are, um, most cases, you know, um, known to violate court orders without consequences. So the Supreme Court had given um, a, a, a ruling, delivered a ruling, and gave an order that parties should maintain status quo. There were some sections of, um, you know, the society that insisted that the CBN should not obey such order. Uh, the CBN also had consistently threatened the banks. The banks have been turned to a scapegoat in this um, uh, you know, quagmire. And so the banks also are very careful. And if the banks are refusing to accept old notes from customers, how, if you, as a, a court, who is not in charge of currency, a court who does not have the power to compel a bank to accept old notes from them, and if they go ahead to accept old currency and the bank refuse such currency, that will amount to a complete and total loss for the courts that accepted those monies. And then um, also for customers that have accepted such monies. Even the bank, if the bank accepted those monies and take them to the CBN and the CBN refused to accept those currencies from them, what that means is that the bank also will run at a loss. That will be deficit. All right, uh, but then I would like to know what kind of example for uh, directive uh, okay. um, the CBN is, is because of um, the lack of a clear court directive from the CBN that is making people apprehensive. They want to play safe. They want to be on the safer side. Imagine um, if the the, 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 the uh, Attorney General of the Federation had said, "Well, we are going to obey the court um, order." But the CBN didn't come out with any statement to say, well, in view of this court order, I would have expected them to come out with such a statement to categorically say, in view of this court order, even though we were not sued as CBN, but being an agency of government and the federal government was sued in the matter, being an agency of government, we would wait till the order laps on Wednesday and then now take for that directive, even though we have instructed our lawyers to challenge that order. We'll leave that to the lawyers to so do. That will douse tension. That will now encourage people, including the banks, to act on that directive issued by the CBN. But in the absence of any directive, people are going to be apprehensive and will insist that they want to play on the side of, you know, caution by saying, well, well the CBN had said 10, on the 10th of February, and the way the CBN is going about the policy and insistence by the CBN governor, they would rather want to play on the side of caution. I think that's what basically is playing out with the High Court. They are not in a position to enforce that order or not, or insist that the currency that they are accepting must be collected by the banks from them. 
when they are not um, in the in the position to so do. All right. Uh, similarly, uh, the banks were rejecting old Naira notes today amid the confusion in the polity. Now, who is to blame for all this chaos? I have explained to you that um, you can't blame the banks the same way you can't blame the banks and uh, the uh, uh, courts. The CBN, the, the, the blame rests squarely at the doorstep of the banks. I was at the bank today also. The crowd was massive. I basically could The branch close to me was not open. I had to drive to another branch, and basically couldn't do anything. Because when the banks have been turned to scapegoat, you saw how CBN officials were showing us videos of uh, banks holding Naira notes and the rest. So it was as if this currency was, you know, more than, the supply was more than enough. That was the banks that were holding it. Even despite the fact that the bank had insisted that the currency, the currency printed or minted was a far cry, a shortfall of the one that were mopped up from them. So if the bank had been turned to a scapegoat in that direction, and from what we learned that some of them were able to find, and the CBN had given a directive, despite the court order, the CBN we did not come with a counter-directive. Who is the bank in Nigeria where government are known to violate court orders when even lawyers are encouraging the CBN to flaunt the court order that they were not a party in the matter? where even senior lawyers for their personal interest and sentimental political reasons are asking the president to issue executive order to, to uh, an executive order contrary to the um, uh, 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 ruling of the, of, of the Supreme Court. So when that happens, what do you expect? The CBN will now act as a demigod. And so any bank that goes contrary to the order of the CBN insisting that they want to, obey the court order. Right. When, at the end of the day, they obey those court orders and they'll be on their own and nobody will come to their aid, they'll run at a loss and might even fold up. So they would rather want to play on the side of caution. So I blame the CBN for not giving a further directive. Also, quickly, I must say this, that it is easy for people to say, oh, the CBN was not sued and so they could have been obeying a, a, an order. But the Attorney General of the Federation and the federal government was sued. The CBN reports to the government of the Federation. When the MFLA went for an extension of that um, uh, policy, that press statement that he issued, it was alleged that he issued that statement right in front of the president house in Daura. Why did he go to consult with the president if he can act on his own? So I, I think the CBN ought to have played also, assuaged the, 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 the fears of Nigeria, respected politely the court order, and then request their lawyers to do the needful um, 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 as had been directed. But going, keeping silent in the face of all of this, the only thing, the only uh, inference you can deduce from it is the fact that the CBN was insisting that they must go ahead with the deadline, and they, they have done that, and Nigerians are suffering for it. Mr. So Libros, we have also seen uh, a situation where more, more and more state governors have taken the federal government to court over the matter. I would like to know, just like other Nigerians would like to know, was there no other option available to the governors beyond going to court? But before you answer this, let's go for this commercial break. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Politics Tonight. And I still have with me Libros Oshoma a lawyer and a public affairs analyst were dissecting Supreme Court's order on old Naira notes. All right, before we went on that break, I wanted you to talk about the fact that more and more state governors have taken the federal government to court over this matter. Was there no other option available to the governors beyond going to court? Yeah, the, governor has, uh, the governors have exhausted the available options. Uh, the options are available to them. You remember when the matter started... Um, the Progressive Governors Forum visited the president and pleaded with him to allow both old and new currency coexist. And that is what um, is obtainable in other places where currencies are redesigned or swapped. Um, even before going to the governors, there had been appeal by stakeholders. Going to the president, there had been appeal by stakeholders. There had been um, in interviews by you know, um, economists 
Uh, even before then also, the uh, World Bank and the IMF also had advised, experts also have advised that um, you can't decapit that decapitalize your people all in the name of attempting to catch a few thieves or that you want to withdraw Naira in circulation to show up your Naira. There is uh, the dollar, for example, is one of the most common currency in circulation in the world today. To the extent that in African countries you trade it on the street, but yes, that had not devalued the, the the currency, the dollar. You know, so it means that we are not doing what we should do to show up the value of the naira. So the governors took all of those steps, discussed the meeting with the president, rather than the president setting up an independent forensic, you know, expert committee to advise him, despite the fact that he's Finance minister had said the ministry was not carried along in this policy. The governor said he was going to go back to a Mefele, who was allegedly the Sibian governor, who allegedly created the problem. The moment the president, sorry, the president said he was going to go back to a Mefele. The moment the president made that statement, it was obvious that, you know, there was no going back. And the only options, the only option left for the governors at that point was to seek the uh, aid of the court. Being the protector and the holders of the trust of the people. And they also saw the, 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 the suffering that the masses were going, going, going through. And some were degenerating into crisis. And being chief security officers of the state, even though they do not command any flag, it was easy for a few of them to now say, you know what, let's test this issue, whether a policy the, the, the government can apply policies despite the hardship. Not that nobody's contesting the, the powers of the CBN or the federal government to redesign currency. The issue here is that the applicability of that policy, if it creates unnecessary hardship to a larger majority, and the governors being the holders of the trust and the protectors of the security and welfare of the people, do they have a right? to seek for uh, redress somewhere. So those are the issues. So that's why the governor had to, governors had to take the step that they took and preempt it. And with what has happened, more governors have you know, applied to be joined in that suit. And I think all governors of the state of the federation should be joined in that suit. And they also, the Supreme Court should, add, should invite you know, amicus, you know, some senior lawyers, you know, amicus as amicus, to address it on this matter because it is a very crucial and critical matter. It is as 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 um, um, mundane or as um, technical as we might want to look at it. Because some persons have argued that if the Supreme the CBN is not a party in the matter, then the Supreme Court is robbed of jurisdiction, which is true. But in this case, there's need to invite senior lawyers. All all right. the, uh, Mr. Uh, Shoma. So, uh, sorry, quickly, all the, all, right. all the states of the federation to join in the matter so that the Supreme Court can look at it holistically and take a decision one way or the other to also save our democracy. Otherwise, the hardship might snowball into crisis, unnecessary crisis that we do not envisage. All right, like you rightly pointed out, uh, many have advised the CBN to extend the deadline. The World Bank has similarly drawn attention to the sufferings of Nigerians and the need to extend. Why do you think the CBN is bent on enforcing this deadline at this time? Yeah, um, the question I've consistently asked myself is, what will the CBN suffer? What injustice will the CBN suffer if the deadline is extended? There is none, none at all. So if there is no injustice or if there is no hardship, even now that the CBN has said they don't have capacity to print more currency, so you have a shortfall in the system. Indirectly, when you have a shortfall, you are decapitalizing your people. So when that has happened and there is no, no economic reason, no non-technical reason for insisting, apart from the fact that you say you want to stop boat buying, then it means that the reason for the insistence is political. And when it becomes political, you know, um, 
reasoning, proper reasoning, technical reasoning, holistic approach takes flight and sentiment, you know, creeps in. Also, some persons have alleged that, you know, whether we admit the fact or not, that CBN governor, Emefele, is an interested party. He attempted through the back door to contest for the number one seat through the ruling party. He, even though they are denying it, but he employed a lawyer to approach the court to challenge the CBN, the secret application to the CBN Act, whether he has a right or whether he can contest for an office while still sitting as the governor. So with all of this political uh, sentiment in play, the only inference one can deduce Having established that there is no injustice or no hardship that the CBN will suffer if both co currency coexist, the only inference that one can deduce is that there is a political motive behind this. Whether the people are suffering it or not, it is immaterial now to the CBN and its handlers. And then for the president, it is obvious now that once you want to sell an idea to the president, just tell him it will fight corruption. All right. There will be no reasoning through. So that's what I think is at play here and not economic policy because this cannot sustain economic policy. The CBN cannot be right and the entire world wrong, apart from the sentiment that is being bandied about catching political thieves or stop, stopping vote buying. And I do not see how this truly can stop vote buying, but rather it will influence it, it will worsen it. All right. I would have loved to have your own uh, recollections of personal experiences since this policy was rolled out for, for well, out of time. But then quickly, with ah, regards to Wednesday's difficult. hearing, all right, with regards to Wednesday's hearing at the Supreme Court, what are your expectations? Um, for me, I'm not a, a lawyer in the matter, so I will not um, uh, be expecting um, anything. But there is a preliminary objection in the matter, and I know the Supreme, this, uh, Supreme Court might either ask parties to all, you know, file their briefs in the matter. Both the issue of a preliminary objection, um, the issue of its allocated applications, and all of the issues, the Supreme Court might want to take all of them holistically and then, you know, set a further date to give uh, uh, rulings and judgment. If they determine that they have jurisdiction, then they can go ahead, you know, to take um, the substantive matter. Otherwise, then that will be the end of the matter. But on my personal note, I have people who are working for me, the everyday workers, who are working for me, you know, uh, in a the place I'm doing a minor renovation. And do you know, since this crisis started, I've not been able to face so many of them. And then the everyday people, the gate men, the artisan that I usually give 500 naira, 200 naira to, as social security safety net, I've not been able to do that because I don't, I've not, been able to access cash since this thing started. Even at some point, I couldn't even do transfer because it is not all my account that are even online because of uh, fear of uh, internet fraud. I couldn't do transfers in even the one that I can do uh, internet transfers on. So because the pressure on this, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, bands bandwidth is much. If, if an application that only could take 1 million subscribers at the point, was taking about 10 million hit at the same time. So, mm. and it's a business, it's a right. going concern. You don't expect the bank to just go expand their, their broadband when, you know, the profit coming from it is not enough. Considering also the Jaffa syndrome, when a lot of people, you know, most of the ITS part, you know, are, are attractable to other places uh, in the world today. So mm. I, I think really Nigerians, if at this stage, I could be going through all of those challenges, I imagine what my grandmother in the village or my mother in, in, in the local government will be going through, uh, considering the fact that my village, Janet Better, doesn't even have a bank. And you will drive for right. five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Libros Ashoma. Thank you for to. sharing that with us. Thank and you. thank you for your robust analysis on the program today. I have been speaking with Mr. Libros Ashoma, a lawyer and public affairs analyst as we dissect Supreme Court's order on old narrow note. Thank you very much.